All right, this is another one by request. I was asked to take a look at Kubuntu 12.10. So why don't we just dive right, in, dive right in and take a look at this inside a virtual box with Ubuntu 12.04 as the host. Now I was toying around with this a few minutes before getting started, and I, I really liked what I see now. Kubuntu is based off the K off is based off the KDE desktop environment. And this environment, or the developers really have, tr in the past, have tried to develop this and you know create this desktop environment to make it somewhat uh, of a transition type of operating system from Windows users going over to a Linux-based operating system. And in this case, you know, Kubuntu running the KDE desktop environment. It's been a hit and mit miss, a hit and miss in the past, but I think lately the last couple of versions have been a little bit more bit more stable a little bit more polished and I really like what I see if I had to describe this I would say flashy now I was playing around with this this is the, the default desktop here minus the gadget or more specifically uh, widgets uh, gadgets is what you would right click on the desktop in Windows 7 in this case it would be widgets so if I just right click here add widgets the bottom here you see a bunch of choices I can just use the uh, Hold the mouse here, the left wheel click, and just scroll across. I added the uh, digital clock. Oh, why don't we add uh, something else? Let me just, I'll just do this. Left click, drag that there. This is going to give me some uh, hardware information about my machine. I can just click the red X button here and get out of that. If I can resize this, if I choose to get out of this I can just remove that by clicking that as far as my digital clock I can also of course resize this any way I want to let me just move it small and I'll just put that here let me just put that here in the middle for now another thing I like about this besides the ability to right click to a menu and activities or shortcut a shortcut something that you cannot do in a GNOME 3 or Ubuntu Unity environment this is very nice uh, the ability to move the panel easily go to uh, panel options panel settings screen edge hold that move it to the top or to the right I guess but we'll just go to the top for now and I will just leave it there and it's really that simple you have some various uh, items here in the panel bar such as the time and date my internet available devices the uh, sound mixer here Playback devices, capture playback streams, capture streams. I think you get the picture. Get the picture here. Let me just go all the way to the left. Now this has a very nice, very user-friendly launcher or start button, similar to Windows 7. But with this, you can change it. This is the default launcher here. But say you didn't like this. Say I wanted to. You wanted to change the look of this. All you need to do is right-click, switch to the classic menu style left click again and there you go you have something that something that resembles a little bit more like maybe Windows XP or Windows 2000 uh, you know menu and sub menu of installed applications as you see here if you wanted to go back you can just right click switch to application launcher launcher style and uh, let's say I was looking for something specific um, let's see type in mail and we have something called Kmail, the mail client. Just click that and that should boot right up. And did you know, it'll give you some uh, tips here. Let me just uh, provide personal data. I will not do that. Let me go ahead and get out of this here. Did you know that you can assign custom icons to each folder individually, see folder properties? These are little startup tips that can be very, very uh, helpful if you are a Windows user coming to Linux. All right, let me get out of this. Let's go back here. Uh, let's see, let's try uh, computer. Let's try, mm, where, let's try system settings. This would be essentially your uh, control panel to use a Windows analogy where you can change the settings and the looks of Kubuntu. Let's take a quick look at let's see color and let's see devices profiles add a profile don't want to do that but this is to manage color correction of devices. 
Let me get out of that. Let's take a look at one more thing. Actually, let me just switch this again to the classic menu. Okay, get out of that there. Click OK. Oh, it didn't change. Let's try it one more time. What did I miss? No, there we go. All right. Let's try, let's see, multimedia. And let's try something called Dragon Player Video Player. And this is where you would play your disc. If I had a disc inside the uh, DVD drive, which I do not, and simple play function here, settings, show the two bar, show the menu bar. And notice the three buttons here, minimize, maximize, and exit out of, out of that particular function. Well, I think you get to picture here. Let's go back to the launcher menu settings. Hit uh, apply and OK. Will it work now? Yeah. I'm running this. Let's try it again. OK. This may be a characteristic of the fact that I did not fully install this. I'm just running this off the ISO inside the virtual box. But anyway, briefly in conclusion, uh, Kubuntu to me looks, as I said, flashy. I think it's fun to use. If you are a Windows user and wanted to dive right in into a fully loaded uh, Linux, Linux type of operating system or Linux based operating system, check out Kubuntu 12.10. It looks terrific. I think if you, are, if you are a Windows user and wanted to feel somewhat comfortable, you know, trans uh, migrating from uh, Windows 7 or even Windows 8, if you don't like Windows 8, take a look at Kubuntu. It's it's fun. It's flashy. I think it's easy to use, and it, you know, it appears mostly stable. Uh, you know, once you if you do choose to install this, make sure you uh, install uh, all the updates and reboot if you need to, and hopefully you will be uh, good to go. But that's it. That is my take on Kubuntu 12.10. Looks like a fun desktop. Anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for watching as l and listening. Don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see. This will be my, uh, my last uh, review here before uh, Thanksgiving. Hopefully, hopefully after that, I'll keep in touch with you guys and do some other stuff, maybe another podcast or whatever. But that's it for now. Thank you so much. And as always, I will catch you guys sometime in the future.